All right, guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. Today's video, we're going to start a new series where I have one on one conversations with my subscribers. Basically, if you're not already aware of this, the channel is more based around uh, beginners and little uh, intermediate up to advanced topics, but that's <coughs> what we're going to do here in the future. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have one on one conversation with here with Mike Lemming. Um, I'll put a link for his uh, channel in the description. So basically, we're just going to have a little conversation and we're going to get to know Mike a little bit. And then we're going to go into some uh, details on his tank. And then we're going to get into some beginner guy questions. And essentially, I'll just answer them the best of my ability. I haven't seen these questions, so we're just going to wing it. All right. So go ahead, Mike. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself here. What's up, guys? Uh, channel's Mike Lemming. It's my name. Um, from Florida. live in Massachusetts. Haven't been in the hobby for too long. Um, but, you know, certainly with um, Fish Hex's help, it's, it's been going well. I started in a planet tank. Um, and now here I am in the saltwater hobby. So it's uh, there's a lot to learn, a lot I still need to learn, and it's just nice to have a community of people that are willing to help. So it's, uh, it's it, this is to you guys. I appreciate it. Um, you know, Fisher Hex subscribers he's got a lot of them. So hopefully, you know, you guys will you know, join in as well and help me on my adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, let's get this thing going. All right, man. So, well, Mike, how long you been in the hobby for? Like rock? not long, dude. I um I remember being really young. My parents had a forty breeder. It was like a little freshwater. Uh, just a little nothing tank and i, I kind of lost interest for the longest time and then i moved up to massachusetts and my girlfriend had a little two and a half gallon little nothing tank and i threw a couple a couple um tetras in there for my daughter she thought it was cool that graduated and not trying to get too big so i got a four gallon mm -hmm. um and that lasted all of a month i got a 10 gallon that lasted all of a month and in that time, I researched saltwater stuff, and here I am with a 30 and then a 75 on the way. So in the matter of, I think since November, it's uh, May now. So in that time, I went, you know, this is will be in my, I think, my, like, fifth tank. And, yeah. and I can only point. imagine, I can only imagine five months from now, I'm ready to go to, like, a 125, 200-something. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the problem with <laughs> saltwater is once you get started, man, it, it just it progresses so fast. Yeah, but it's consumed yeah. me, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, uh, you know, we've talked a lot on the phone and we you know, got to know you and all that good stuff. So, I mean, I've answered several of your questions, but there is definitely a lot out there that uh, Lots a, lot of of people, like, <laughs> a lot of people have missed. So, uh, go ahead, just wing it, man. What's, what's the first question so, about you saying? You know, I, I thought about doing this video and you asked me about it. And I think for me anyway, like my subscribers are all fairly new. We all are kind of like on the same page. We know mm -hmm. enough to do the saltwater hobby, but we don't know enough as far as you know what you need to know so like um you know especially with this new tank build i have like a lot of questions like first off like how do you feel about uv sterilizers well i think uh with everything uv uv sterilizers have a place in the hobby now i personally don't use one of them and basically i'll tell you why i use a bio pellet reactor so uh bio, you know if you don't really know what a uv sterilizer does just in case it essentially um, ruins the cell. It destroys the cell in in either uh, you know a microorganism or something like that. Uh, bacteria. Basically, what has been shown to happen, and, and I've never tried it because I've always had a bio pellet reactor, is that uh, when the water runs through the UV sterilizer, that's you know you know with the bacteria from the bio pellet reactor, it actually can destroy the bacteria, causing it to die and uh, in turn impacting you know water quality basically making the bio pellet reactor obsolete now i've never personally tried this but this is what i've read countless you know over the years and this is what i've seen friends actually have that issue like why is my bio, bio nitrates going down why is my bio pellet reactor not working well oh i have a uv sterilizer that's double the size of my tank rated and and you know maybe that's what has to do with killing the actual bacteria that goes in there so i personally think if you you know UV sterilizers are more for quarantine systems. I think that that's what their benefit is. is that, you know, when it's in a quarantine system, the uh, you know you have the back you know you have parasites and ick and all that stuff can go through the reactor or the uh, UV sterilizer itself and then get damaged on the way. The only time I've ever actually seen an effective UV sterilizer was on a uh, a quarantine system, a very very big four yeah. quarantine system, and that was his job was just to basically uh you know that's what his job was to basically destroy and uh you know the back yeah. and all that well, that's a good segue because another one of my questions is uh like I've, I've watched a few videos and everybody tells me that they like the the um the um bio reactor can you explain what that entirely does 
Uh, well, basically, bio, bio reactor is uh, you know if you've seen you know some of the videos that I have, I have I made my own bio reactor. You my do. Own it's pretty videos. pretty impressive, dude. Yeah, they're for you. They're expensive. That's the only reason why I've kind of gone the DIY route with it. Yeah. But essentially, you have the media which the bacteria lives on. Now, the bacteria grows on this media. In turn, this when it grows, it. it eats uh, up nitrates as its main food, food so source. So is this the same concept as, a, as an algae scrubber as well? Uh, kind of. It, it, it has the same benefits, essentially. Um, I know that my, macroalgae has a tendency to pick up more phosphates um, opposed yeah, yeah. to the biopellar reactor. The biopellar reactor is specifically for nitrates. That's what I use it for, and then I use GFO for um, phosphates. Now, Basically, what happens is the bacteria grows on this on these on this media, and then it gets tumbled in the reactor. And then I personally, what you should do is skim it off so it doesn't cause like issues. Some people get cyanobacteria if you don't have enough yeah. in your tank with all that stuff. But I personally run my bio <coughs> reactor directly into my curve seven skimmer, which skims it, aerates the water that comes off of it, and it essentially makes it harmless. Uh, but yeah, the bacteria grows on there and then gets chipped off bit by bit, and then every so often, every like two months or so, I have to top off the media. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys haven't realized yet, this is more about equipment. Um, I got a ton of questions about equipment, yeah. especially with this 75 build um, and, you know, Fisher Hex with the uh, 125. Um, he's got a lot of the equipment that I need or need to upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, so if you haven't got the clue yet, it's this is more of a uh, an equipment conversation uh, more than anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but on to my next question. This is a, this is kind of a from seeing your past videos, you might have an answer to this. Yeah. Um, but I have the uh, Galaxy Hydro 165 LEDs. You have the Aqua Mars, I believe, Aqua Mars, something like that. Light, yep. Um, so you know, if, uh, you having, I think you have three on your tank. Not three. Yep. So I will have two on my 75. Is there a way to kind of splice the wires to run four wires off two instead of taking up all four? Plugs, because plugs itself. I mean, plugs, plug real estate is, is is pricey right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get that, especially on when you start getting into uh, using controllers and stuff like that. Yeah, Even exactly. Cars get expensive. Uh, what I've seen people do in the past, um, I don't do this because the Aqua Mars actually allows you the daisy chain. Uh, you can plug one into the other, into the other, another, and daisy chain over. I didn't um, know that. Yeah, they they actually allow you to do that. Um, so what most people do is you can actually buy a plug, and I'll find a link for it for you that that actually splits off itself, splice off, and allows you to plug in the individual down to one cord. Um, and I've seen people cool. think, well, you can actually you know cut it if you really want to and splice it off yourself if you feel uh, so you know inclined to do so with electric voltage. But I don't recommend it unless you have done it in the past. But yeah, because yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, four four plugs for my lighting is kind of tough to swallow. I mean, if I have to, I have to. Whatever. Yeah. But um, what I've done in the past too is take those plugs and go down to Home Depot and buy like the uh, the four plug uh, extension cord, oh, okay. each one in there, and then plug the one and plug that one into time. the. Okay, cool. yep. um, so that's another good uh, segue. Um, I have uh, a lighting agenda that I follow. It's not anything crazy. I had a time. I still have a timer on my whites, my blues. My my schedule is so crazy that I just when I wake up I turn the blues on, let them go for a little while, then ramp them up right before my my whites come on, and I do the same at night. I ramp them down and then I shut them off, you know, willingly. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm doing like a 12 hour. I would say my blues are on for a little longer than 12 hours, and my whites are on for like 10 or something or, mm -hmm. or eight maybe. Um, either way, what do you do for your your lighting in well in duration and intensity? Because that's a good question that a lot of people still have yeah. questions about. Yeah, well, uh, before I added the, um, what was it, the, basically when I did the adapter from the Apex to the Aqua Mars, when I built that and connected them to there, uh, before I did that, my lighting schedule was 12 hours blue, 10 hours white, mm -hmm. and then I was running 100% blue and about 75% white, but it was kind of hard to tell because I was using the knob, so it was kind of hard to tell more the intensity. Uh, but since I have um, incorporated the, the, basically the dimming, down to 10 percent and then shutting off basically the ramping of up and down yeah. i actually have my blues on for well, there we go sorry the screen went black there for a second uh i actually have my blues on for 13 hours and my whites on for about uh about 11 but that's with the ramping in between so it's and you recently there. set up the ramping to the to the apex that yeah video, yeah right yeah. that's really cool yeah that's awesome um so here's just a question not that i've i've talked about um but a lot of people, just like I asked you before I did it, um, I wanted to go with a controller. You and I suggested the junior. You say, don't bother. 
Yeah, well, so it's I mean, 250 as opposed to 600 for the regular one. Mm-hmm. You say don't bother. Yeah, and I actually I had this discussion on the forums here earlier this morning, believe it or not. Uh, they say BRS says that it holds up to five modules. A guy from Apex said that it's seven modules. But if you think about it, the main Apex itself has up to 240 modules. Yeah. So that's a huge difference. I mean, we all grow with this hobby. As you can see, when you've got your tanks, look how far you've already progressed into the sure. next tank. So you're going to progress equipment. I mean, I personally, after all these years, I have two Apex bars, which I just recently added the second one. The only reason why I added it is because the Zeobis system's down now. But, um, I always like to prepare, like build your tank for growth. Mm-hmm. You know, add that, add, get the bar, get the system that you can grow with. I mean, if you go on Craigslist, you can buy an Apex Junior for probably a hundred dollars because a lot of people are selling. Mm-hmm. Going, oh, I saw them recently for one hundred and sixty, and that's yeah, that's why I thought about it. So, mm-hmm. and then you, of course, yeah. told me not to. So I appreciate yeah. it. I just wait. I mean, it's personal preference. A lot of people do it. A lot of people like Apex Junior. A lot of people don't have plans of upgrading. Yeah, but. I've already seen you. I know your personality. I know that you're going to upgrade. You're going to do more stuff. So I'm going to just guide you in the right direction. So you I, and I appreciate that, sir. Yeah, Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so on to the next question. Here's another one again, uh, geared towards my next, uh, build, um, uh, my current, um, return pump. Mm. It's uh, it's like an Aquion something. I don't know. I got one when I first started, I just bought a bunch of stuff hoping to be most cost efficient and not really, um, what should work the best but the one i got i think it's a 5 513 gallon per hour max mm. so um my question to you is i know you run a manifold if i were to do that i know you run like four prongs out of the manifold mm-hmm. and i think you're using three of them. or three or yeah. three yeah um so well, if i were to do okay. that i might only use like one or two just for like my 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 dual reactor and then potentially something else in the future Will the 513 and a 70 or 613, I'm sorry, and a 75 be sufficient for you know, a, a small manifold and, and mm-hmm. to be able to crank water through, or do I need to upgrade that? Well, you got to think here. You're going to be, you have head pressure that you're going to be running through. So you're going to be running dual returns, I imagine. So not only does the water have to go up, but then it has to splice up and then come across and back into the tank. Mm-hmm. So you'll put a ball valve right before it goes up, you know, up top. And, and then that's them. where you can add head pressure to send more water down through the manifold. But the problem is, is that dual reactor, we have the same dual reactor. I mean, I, I'm running what 1600 gallons per hour through my system. And I have it dialed down running a lot through the manifold. And I just took the bio pellet reactor off and it's still using up a lot through that reactor. It takes mm-hmm. a lot more water than you think to run that, that, um, that reactor itself. So you're saying the 613, I need to upgrade. Well, this is the thing. You won't know until you try. So I wouldn't say go out and buy anything until you at least try to hook it up. See if you can get a good tumble on the GFO and and add a sufficient flow through the actual tank itself. Now, I'm not a big flow for a person through the tank. I like slower flow. Not a big flow guy, guy, says the guy with... Well, <laughs> four pumps, crank it yeah. to the MP40s or something. Well, yeah, I, I I allow I let a lot of flow through power heads, but the return yeah. through my refugium, I don't like it's, a lot of flow from my yeah. refugium. Uh, so I personally don't like a lot of flow, but I would wait until you set it up, and then you know if it doesn't work for you, I can. Um, I'm actually selling my DC six thousand um, here within the next. So month. all you subscribers, yeah. I got it. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's what fifteen hundred gallons per hour. So you'll be fine with that. Plus it's DC and you can adjust it all stuff. And here's another question yeah. uh, that's you know not on my little list of questions. Uh, you had said that when we were talking when I first started talking about upgrading my tank, you were talking about the eight hundred gallon per hour overflow. Is that still good? Because I mean, I have I've been eyeing it on eBay for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not cheap for for some for some you know acrylic, but. Okay. You think the 800 would be enough for my 75, right? I know you, what do you use, yeah. 1,200 for your I use 1,200 for the 125, and I have it dialed down quite a bit just because okay. uh, I don't put a lot of flow through the, to the tank itself. Not At least not right now because most of it is being used on the manifold. But um, basically, I would go with that that actual overflow for two reasons. One, you get what you pay for. And if you pay for quality, you, there's a 99% chance you're going to get quality. Um, and I actually, that was the second overflow I got. The first one I got was from a guy who just kind of, it was, it was shitty, dude. I sent it back. So, uh, so I went and got it, got the good one, spent the extra. So plus you can upgrade with that overflow. Uh, like I said, build for upgrading. You might go to, you is know, that, is what you're saying by upgrade is I can take that one off is what you're saying. Yeah. You could take it off and you'd be able to put the 1200 on there if I need, 
You could well, I'm just saying when you upgrade tanks, I mean, once you you could upgrade to oh, hundred gallon okay, and okay, use okay. the same overflow. So you yep. go to the store, say you get a deal and you can buy a used hundred and twenty gallon tank, you could use that same overflow. You just Yeah, and I like that. Now, that's one thing about like yeah. the ATO I just bought. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, you know, I could have just went cheap and bought something for like sixty bucks, but I figured I mean, why not? I mean, I'm mm-hmm. gonna buy something, why not spend money on it and then be able to use it throughout the years, assuming it, you know, will last throughout the years. Yeah. Um yeah, so the reason I ask all these, uh, you know, overflow and return questions is because I have the, you know, as you know, I have the the DIY PVC overflow, and that yeah, thing is a son of a bitch, man. <laughs> Every time I do a water change, it's like oh, I'm back to square square one, and I got to redial in my pump, mm-hmm. and, and like right now, my sump's higher than it should be. It's actually over the over the uh, baffles, but. <laughs> I'm not running down there every 20 minutes because it's going too low or going too high. So right now it's stable water line. Yeah. Even though it's not where it should be, I'm just letting it run. Cause I'm basically just trying to maintain this tank until the 75 goes up. Until you get back. Um, but yeah, man, if I can, if I can give one new suggestion to anybody out there who's looking to get into the saltwater hobby, don't do it yourself. As far as an overflow goes, it yeah. sucks. I'm God, I'm telling you. you. All it takes is one rogue snail sitting on that overflow, and it will overflow your tank, man. It's, it's, it's just not good. I mean, I, I have the PVC, and I have the a tom-tom sucking out the air. And the siphon hasn't broken, thank God, knock on wood. Um, but it's just – it's it's so much bullshit to deal with. Um, and then that's another question. So because I have the, the overflow where it's actually overflowing and not siphoning, um, basically it's up to my return pump. It doesn't have to match because the, the it will pump out water. Therefore, the gravity will take it down. So it's not – I don't have to really dial much in, right? No, I mean you don't really have to dial in. That's the thing is with PVC overflows, it it's based on the siphon, just generally on the siphon. And in running a reef tank on pure siphon, basically you're taking water over the rim of the tank, which is – you're just fighting. I'm almost oh, three months in gravity. Yeah, yeah, well, I did it for about eight months on my other, you know, before this 125 got drilled, I ran a PVC overflow. I ran two because I was I wanted the backup just in case. Yeah. Um, which, in hindsight, I just it was just a mistake. You drop all this money in there, and then, you know, you don't want to buy an overflow. But, mm-hmm. like I said, you're fighting gravity daily. And then, you know, I think you said you had the aqua pump or something on there, basically keeping it. it keeping uh, it the, the, yeah, the, um, yeah. whatever it is, the Tom's aqua lifter. Just, yeah, uh, yeah. Just to kind of keep it going, give me, yeah, give me some kind of warranty yeah. on like my half-ass overflow. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if it works, great news. Um, but it has so far. But it's just I'm yeah. tired of the BS of doing it. Yeah. Hey, we lost. There you go, man. Yeah, my, uh, no, cool. I might have to too. run and grab a charger. I'm, I'm getting low, twenty percent. <clears throat> so uh, here's another question for you. Um, what about ATO reservoirs? Because I've I have that. Like I said earlier, I had that four gallon planted. Um, and it's just like a little four gallon glass tank. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, with the 75, I don't know if the, the four gallon, I mean, I've seen people with like two fifties with like a 15 gallon reservoir is a four sufficient for a, for a 75 unit five to fill it up every four or five days. Oh yeah, that's fine. And I mean, depending on if you have an open top tank and all that stuff, you'd be fine. I run a five gallon on the 125. It's technically okay. 180 gallons, but, uh, with the sump and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I run a five gallon. I fill it up twice a week maybe uh it just depends on what's convenient for you for you if you're going to be out of town a lot then you might want to go bigger but yeah. just remember uh if you just, if you have once you have a fail safe on your auto top off you just got to imagine uh how much water can your tank handle if your auto top off was to fail just saying a lot of people have fail safes but what if what if you were to dump all this water in your tank what would happen that's what i keep in mind so if you have a five gallon tank or five gallon auto top off or better yet, let's just say you have a 10 gallon auto top off and you have a 75 gallon tank. You drop 10 gallons of water in there, it's going to overflow. And well, of course. It's going to just, you know, it's going to kill your coral. It's, it, or it might kill your coral. It's going to jack some shit up, that's for sure. Well, I don't know. I got belief in coral now. If they can go two days in a box uh, from uh, yeah. USPS, I, they can, they yeah. can do, do pretty well in, in, in yeah. bad circumstances. Um, so, how about this? I saw this, uh, I saw this like a couple nights ago. Do you throw a heater in your ATO reservoir? No, no, I uh, I don't you really need to because it's just no. a small amount of water, right? No, yeah, you don't need to run that, and you're not using it enough. I mean, uh, you got to think. My auto auto top off kicks on probably depends on if I have what the house is like and humidity wise, but it kicks on probably three or four times a day that I realize. Usually when you're making videos. Oh, of course, when I'm making videos, why not? And I can hear because the pump is starting to take a shit. Remember, I told you earlier not to run calc through the pump. Well, yeah, yeah. a year and a half of running it through a pump, it finally is taking a crap. But I don't, that's yeah. what calc does is uh, just gunks everything up, right? 
Well, it just kind of it, it messes with the propeller, and and you know I kind of neglected cleaning it over time because it isn't. It was only uh, a cheaper auto top off. I don't remember the name of it at this point, uh, but basically it it wasn't even worth the time to clean. But so essentially, I'm just waiting for it to die, and then I already have a replacement just sitting on the shelf. But yeah, yeah I got to get around to it. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, here's uh, one of my last questions, or it is the last question before I blab and ask you a bunch of more questions. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how big to make my sump. Um, it, so I have a four foot 75. Um, my current tank would, in my opinion, be ideal because it's a 30 gallon three foot wide. So that'd be great. Mm-hmm. I don't have anywhere to put, you know, everything from the 30 mm-hmm. before the 75 is up and running to be able to make the baffles and do everything. So mm-hmm. I kind of think I'll probably just sell that this stand and tank on, on Craigslist. But um, I also thought about leaving enough room um, and this is one of my other questions, which is uh, in a different category, but it, it, it Look at coincides with the equipment, um, is I want to put my QT, my quarantine tank, in my uh, underneath my tank. Um, so to do that, if I get like a three-foot tank, I only have, you know, 12 inches for my ATO reservoir, which is probably, I haven't measured, it's probably five or six inches. And then I'm going to see if I can somehow fabricate it and put like a five gallon tank in there. So this is more of a two part question. How do you feel about tank to sump ratio? And mm-hmm. really, and then if you want to answer at the end, will a five gallon work for a quarantine tank? Okay. All right. Well, there's a couple factors. Uh, the actual um, sump itself. The point of a sump is to put all your equipment on, to basically have nothing in the tank. And that's the first part. The second part is to be able to uh, compensate for the water fl- water that overflows once the power is off. So those are the two things you have to take into consideration. One, uh, do you have enough uh, room in the sump to cover if your power got turned off? Would it hold all the water that's going to drain down? to? Because basically you, you're going to have the actual, um, what is it? The uh, I can't even think of it. Man, I can't even think of the name of it. Basically, uh, the water's going to come out of your tank. I'm freaking overflow box. Jesus, man. I'm like, yeah. on that. Yeah. So basically, the water's going to come down to a certain point on the overflow box. And you just got to make sure that that amount of water that goes down the drain to it gets to that level is going to fit in that sump. So that's the first thing you got to do. You got to determine that. The second thing is, what equipment are you going to add? Are you going to add your skimmer? Are you going to do refugium? Are you going to do deep sand bed? Are you going to add reactors? What are you going to do? All of them. Yeah. Well, you got to make sure you have room for all that. You got to be able to get the skimmer cup out. And then you got to be able to, you know, do your maintenance comfortably. If you, I found that if you can't access reactors and stuff like that easily, you won't change them. You won't do the maintenance. That's the one thing that's good, and I'm glad I bought this tank because yeah. the, the stand, basically, both doors open. There's probably two inches on each side that, it, you know, that I can't get to. But I can, you know, with, with the, how big both doors are, I can reach just about everything which is which is what i wanted Mm -hmm. because right now i just have my stand and then one little square door in the middle obviously it's a little bigger but it's you know i go to gotta reach in and then go to the left reach in go to the right to touch anything it sucks um so that's one of the reasons i did buy this but um yeah i mean the sump well also remember i don't mean to cut you off and i just want to say this before i forgot yeah basically the sump adds water volume and yeah. the more water you have, the more stable, quote unquote, essentially more stable the water, you know, you can, you know, the longer it will take for mistakes to, yeah. to show or something to happen. So uh, I always think bigger is better. I mean, I run a 55 on a 125 gallon mm-hmm. tank and um, I mean, it fits all the water, but I mean, it, it's not very much, to, not very much to spare just because of how I've desi- designed the refugee. Yeah. Model. Yeah. So if I went for like, if I did go for something like mine, like a, like a three foot 30, Mm-hmm. Or I don't even, I don't know. I'm trying to, pretty, that's, why, pretty, that's, pretty, that's yeah. my question. Like it, so it doesn't really matter. The water volume is just how much water volume you want to go with. Mm-hmm. It's more about being able to fit everything is what you're saying. Well, what you want to do depends on how big you want your refugium is. I mean, I could have got away with roof with a refugium half the size of what I have. You have a pretty good yeah. size refugium. Yeah. It's more than half the 55 gallons. Yeah. Yeah. Now it just depends on how high you have your baffles too. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that you can fit the water in there. If you can fit the, the size of refugium that you feel is going to be beneficial for you. Um, I mean, if you're growing macroalgae and pulling it out every week, you, your refugium is fine. It doesn't have yeah, to be yeah. big as long as you know you're growing and efficient. Yeah. And you can fit all your equipment. So a 30 gallon will be fine for, for a 75. That's, I mean, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work at yeah. all. Yeah. So my second part of the question about the quarantine tank, um, assuming, because I like, uh, as far as my coral and my fish, I like getting them small. I'm so. <laughs> 
totally fine with getting frags and getting baby fish and then watching them grow. I mean, a lot of people want to get this big show tang right in their tank. I don't care. I'd rather grow with it, grow with yeah, it. It's expensive. Uh, yeah. So yeah. if assuming that like, say I threw a yellow tang, but it's, you know, the size of a half dollar piece or, um, or just like smaller fish, could I get away with a five gallon quarantine tank? Five gallon. Um, you could, I would suggest, I wouldn't really go any lower than uh, a 10 essentially. I mean, I do run three sections that are about, uh, about 10 gallons a piece, but again, I have smaller fish, like you said, in the quantity yeah, yeah. tank, I wouldn't throw a six inch hippo tang in yeah, there uh, exactly. just because the stress would be on. So that's know, why I think the yeah. five might work because I don't care to buy big yeah. fish. I'm totally fine with watching them grow and throw like a, uh, you know, sponge filter on there and a heater yeah. there and then just stick it on anything. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. The reason I, I, I want to go. I'd love to do a ten gallon, um, but my girlfriend wouldn't be too happy if I threw up another tank because she she won't get the concept of a quarantine. So she'll just see a, a, another fish tank over there. So if I can do a five gallon and I can make it fit under you know under my my, my display tank, then that would be ideal. So she wouldn't have to deal with another tank being in the house because she's not too happy. She thought she thought the ten gallon was big. I upgraded to a thirty. She thought that was big, and now she's furious. I got the seventy five, but. Um, you know, I'd rather beg for forgiveness than ask for approval. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. here, here it goes. I got a 75 coming until you get married and then it's not like that anymore. Um, so, I mean, I've asked a lot of questions. We've been going yeah. for what, like 30 minutes or so. Yeah. Something I mean, like that. yeah about 30. Pretty productive. I'm hoping, I'm hoping at least yes. my followers, your followers, some of them, somebody's taken something away from this conversation we've had. Um, you know, I appreciate you taking the time out to actually talk to me. Um, I know, uh, I know you're a busy guy. I'm busy as well, working crazy hours. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, dude, it's, it's been good. I hope we can do this again. Like I said, this is yeah, our got other category. Yeah. I've got countless questions, man. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're willing to talk and willing to you know post, I'm willing yeah, to man. ask. Yeah, we'll figure it out. And I mean, yeah, guys. I mean, if anybody else has any questions that that are related to the equipment topic or anything like that, just put it in the comment section below. I'm going to post this video on my channel, and I'm going to give Mike a copy so you can post it on his. We'll um, it. And like I said, guys, uh, you know, subscribe to Mike Lemming there. I'm going to put a link in the description below, and uh, you know. Uh, basically, like I said, this channel is pretty much centered around beginners and, um, you know, I figured knowledge equals growth. So why not learn as much as you can so you can be successful, uh, later next week, probably we're going to have uh, yeah, probably you know, next week. Why we'll not do it every Thursday thing? I mean, I have time. I get out of yeah. work four o'clock every Thursday. I'm on four fifteen. We can do it again. Yeah, we can do it again next Thursday and we'll just do like, we'll do like a fish topic or something like that. And we'll just get into it. All right. So if you guys like this, go ahead and uh, like, comment, subscribe. And as, as always, if you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, thanks, Mike. See you later. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.